It's another slow day at Mrs. Duckshee's. When I get a warning. Hmm. I suppose she was right. I have become complacent, haven't I? Is something the matter, darling? Still, something serious must have occurred. If there's a strong wind warning, I better rush over. <sighs> Sorry, Mrs. Duckshe. Something just came up. Please remember what we discussed and let me know how you find things. But Ono told me he was heading over there this morning. He'd have noticed it intensified. Oh, Uther, don't worry about me, I understand. A young boy like you should be out living your life, not tending to a silly old a silly old lady like myself. Remember to provide perspective. Think of money in terms of physical definition instead of the meaning we assign to it. Huh. And don't forget, it is a restitution, not a loss. Are you okay with all of that? Of course, son. I go. I don't know where I went wrong for not one of my blasted children to have even a fraction of your character. But nonetheless, here we are. Okay, go now. Go! Before I start rambling on once again. Take care, Mrs. Duckshe. Poor old lady. But I had to leave then. Can't risk getting caught in peak hour traffic. Is it truly experiencing a second wind, this outburst? I look around, but she's nowhere around the front. Or the back. Now what? She'd have heard the bell ring if she was home, no? But it's Twyla. When does she ever flare and leave this store? I came all this way, might as well. Hesitantly, I head up the stairs, calling out her name. In here! Finally. Twyla, there you are. Huh? I was wondering... <gasps> Lau? Why are you here? When... what? Where's uncle? What? What? How would I know where your uncle is? Uh, Lau, I'm not even dressed up. Uh, hey, calm down. It's true, I haven't seen her without her head on before, huh? Even when she was really struggling. Despite myself, I find a strange comfort in seeing her like this. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> you look fine, Twyla. Mind if I take a seat? Covered in blankies and jammies. Look, is everything all right? Kind of. I I can't believe it's you. Uh, I really thought you were Uncle Lau. You sounded like him too. Mm. Sorry for intruding. It really wasn't my intention. I was just concerned. It's fine. I'm just surprised. How are you, Lau? I didn't see you at all since yesterday morning. But you sure did send all sorts of people my way, huh? Uh, that's right. That's why you had already left this morning when I woke up. So then, you knew about Ona? Why didn't you tell me anything? Right. That wouldn't have freaked you out? It freaked me out anyway, seeing another tracer in my store. I thought he was shutting me down. And he could have snapped me into that guy. Huh. Oh, and I can't. What am I saying? You're here for a reason. Stick to it. Lau, I can and will fight you. Anyhow, that's not what I'm here for. What's going on with you? Did something happen? <sighs> uh... Where do I even start? She catches me up to speed on the past day and a half, enchanting with Minovi, then the troublesome twins from Zayessa. And finally... I can't believe it. A Paios demon appeared before you? Inside your store? I wish I didn't have to believe it. And you just fended it off on your lonesome? And then went straight into enchanting with a customer afterwards? Mm-hmm. 
No wonder. You know, your strength really is something. Uh, you could say that. But I didn't really have a choice. I had to do something. If I could have just curled into a ball and poofed out of existence, then I probably would have. Even now, I just feel so... Things keep going wrong. And I have so much to be grateful for, don't get me wrong, Lau. But uncle, you, customers like Minovi and Jazz, and you, of course. I'm getting so much help. Everyone is so good to me. But it's exhausting. I keep fighting, I guess. I guess as Ona was saying, but things keep on going wrong. Twyla's right. What is the path forward from here? Perhaps I'm not setting her up well enough to handle things on her own. Or maybe she's already perfectly capable of handling them. A plan forms in my mind. If she's fending off demons, boxes, and zayessens, then it's not a problem of being capable. It's a matter of perspective. Mm. Hmm. Speaking of, how was your enchanting session with Ona? Good. Just, it gave me a bit to think about. Huh? Did something go wrong? No, he's a great guy. A great dad. Such a moving story, too. Really? I thought he just wanted to test how your service worked. You have no idea. He got really personal. I know his whole life story now, basically. Horses. Wish I was there to hear that. She peered back at me, sad, distant eyes, and I know something's gotta be done. Once again, just like I've done every day for the past couple weeks, I think of Hain. What would I say to him if I could have been there before? Before it all spiralled out of control. Twyla seems far from being in a condition similar to Haynes, where somehow all of our efforts had little effect on him. But forces know that can change quickly. All right, get dressed. No, I'm going to sleep now. Good night. Mm. Nah, not yet, you're not. There's plenty of time until six. Let's go. What? Go where? I'm taking you out of this store. Seriously, Twyla, do you ever leave this place? Yeah, of course. I take out the garbage every week. That that does not count. <laughs> Twy. Why are you such a hermit, huh? Come on. Is this what you do when you're not with customers? Just lie around and talk to your teddy bear? <sighs> Shut up! No! I was talking to myself, okay? Not the teddy bear. Liar. <laughs> Right. Go away. You're a tracer. Why are you making fun of me? Because you're young, Twy. You should be out living your life, enjoying yourself. Uh, don't give me that, Lau. You literally do nothing but work all day, every day, and night, probably. Huh. Okay. So we both could use a break. Yeah. But this is your work, though. Nah, I'm just going out with a friend. Not work. We're going out? Where? I don't know. Cafe? Sure, I guess. Yeah, okay. That doesn't sound too bad. Let's go then. You got a coffee? I thought you were going to sleep. Eh, you're right. There's plenty of time till six. Splitting my sleep in half makes me want to sleep more, but I guess I should get used to a strict four hours twice a day. I'm always tempted to sleep in a bit, but then when I think back to it, I've slept for like 12 hours in one day. Well, it's good to hear you keeping up some discipline. Not really. I was going to sleep extra before you stopped me just now. She's not in the right mindset for this, is she? But I have to get this across. It should help. Premeditation is perfect here. It's unfortunate, but strings of bad luck like this sometimes just can't be avoided. Still, how do I even bring this up? 
Her expression is telling me discussing philosophy is the last thing she wants to do right now. Hey. What? You know coffee was the drink of the Stoics. Really? No. I mean, it could have been, but I have no way of knowing. Huh? What? I just wanted to switch the topic. Are you willing to learn some more about Stoicism? This misfortune you've been experiencing is actually quite common among Stoics. Great. So you're telling me you've made me a magnet for bad luck? Mm. No, I'm saying many of the great Stoics went through a lot of strife just like you and managed to remain content in spite of it. Hmm. What is it with you and Stoicism, Lau? Huh? Hmm. Seriously? Can't you just tell me straight up what your obsession with it is? Hmm. Maybe she's just in a sour mood. She's still as inquisitive as ever. Uh, I suppose I can understand how I've come across like that. Truth is, Twy, I don't have any obsession with it at all. I just want things to improve, and this is what appears to be the best approach at the moment, at least in my view. That's all? Yes. You're serious? I am. Why? Don't believe me. Never mind. I do believe you. Trust me, I wouldn't mind being wrong. If it meant Zenoa was better off, then I welcome the prospect of being mistaken. Hmm. If there was some other approach that could better help you as well, then I'm more than open to it. Do you have any problems with stoicism? Like I said, if you don't want... No, no. It's fine, Lau. I was just asking. Still, you would take me for a coffee and then talk about stoicism. <sighs> I thought this wasn't work, huh? Liar. Bosses, she's not holding back in the slightest today, huh? Good. <laughs> Sorry, Twyla. I'm just a little concerned about your condition. Fair enough, I guess. But it's not my fault, Lau. I know I'm supposed to be stoic and not concern myself with matters beyond my control, blah, blah, blah. But seriously, why is my luck so bad? I understand your misery, Twyla. It's not easy dealing with misfortune after misfortune. But the truth of the matter is, misfortune can strike whenever and however. The stars are cruelly arbitrary. Yeah, I know. I don't have to be a poet or philosopher to know that. Why does everyone keep bringing that up? Well, do you remember the discussion we had about external events being neither? Hmm. Good or bad, only our judgments of them have any moral value. Men are disturbed not by things, but by the views which they take on them. Epictetus 125CE Yes. What has he been studying, huh? Mm-hmm. Anyhow, with that in mind... Our way of dealing with misfortune is to make better judgments. And in order to be able to make better judgments when confronted with challenging situations, we need to train in preparation. You've already been doing a lot of this kind of training yourself. Even the meditations your uncle has been having you do is helpful. That kind of reflective meditation on your decisions trains you to make better judgments in the future, no? Yeah. In a similar vein, you can prepare yourself for the future with premeditation. Huh? They call it premeditation malorum, premeditation of future evils. Every so often, try to think through the possibilities present in the day ahead. What could occur that may challenge your ability to make virtuous judgments? Hmm. In other words, what could challenge your decision making and your mental stability? By anticipating the occurrence of these events, we can help ease the impact they may otherwise have on us, and be better able to maintain our overall peace of mind. Make sense? Yeah, I understand. Whenever you're able, this kind of practice can really help Twyla. 
It comes with the realization of the inevitability of misfortune, and that ultimately, we must strive to accept whatever befalls us. Above all, it comes with the feeling of acceptance. With acceptance, your struggles do not have to be interpreted as such, no? Mm. I see. Nothing is ever fortune nor misfortune. It simply is. Just an event in our life, separated from all of our judgments of it. Once judgment is applied, it can become fortune, or if we're unable to make a judgment from that place of virtue, it may become misfortune. Hmm. Hmm. How is that acceptance? Sorry? You said you have to accept what happens to us, but you also have to, like, convince yourself that it's good. Ah, uh, let me rephrase. It's not convincing yourself that an event is good. Suddenly I find myself struggling to respond. Is it not convincing oneself the external is good? Her question shows she's thought through this, perhaps a lot more than I'd anticipated. Ironic, but Twyla does have a tendency to surprise me. No, interpreting the event as good could be part of it, but it's not the ultimate purpose. What's up? Did I confuse you? Yeah, let me think. Stoicism is deceptively simple. Even young Cheng struggles sometimes, huh? Did Ona talk about me? Hmm? A uh, little. I hope I didn't stress the old man out. I think I raised his blood pressure when I told him you were a conduit. Don't worry, he loves you, Lao. The man was moments from adopting you, I swear to the spirits. Sounds like Twyla managed to get him sentimental just now. I have a feeling he's more than convinced of her abilities. Anyhow, when we make judgments, the goal is to find the ability to remain content, regardless of what the event entails. So, you try to judge the event to be good, no matter what it is? No. You accept the event, interpreting it in a positive way can be part of that process, but it's not a necessity. Remember, the concept of indifference and preferred indifference, this is on a similar line of thinking. It's not that we convince ourselves that whatever happens is good, not always. We can find the good in what is usually seen as bad, yes? But some things are ultimately preferable. Wealth is preferable to poverty, good health is preferable to bad health, and life to death. It's not impossible to find good in the latter, but almost always you would rather the former, no? Yeah. The idea is, however, that they are both indifference. Virtue comes before indifference. Mm. They should not affect your ability to make a judgment from a place of virtue. That is the ultimate goal, yes? Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. But still, it's a bit much, no? You're gonna be sad if you lose your house or your leg or whatever. Of course, these are the ideals, just as a model of thinking to which we sh should aspire. Hmm. And we premeditate so we can anticipate losing a leg and be prepared for being able to think through that without being overwhelmed? Exactly, Twyla. You're a natural stoic. You learn twice as much as I could try to teach you. I feel like I could do that sometimes. <laughs> Not always, but sometimes where it's like, oh, I'm going, you know, I'm doing this thing. What's the worst that could happen? I gotta have this conversation. What's the worst that could happen? All right, now I'm ready for that if it does happen. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Hmm. Still, I wonder... Something wrong? Well, sort of. I think... I don't know, Lau. Something happened with Ona, no? So you noticed. Yeah, sort of. Nothing really happened. I'm just hung up on something. <sighs> Can I ask you something, Lau? Go ahead. Are you happy? Where is this coming from? I mean, if you're making these virtuous judgments and stuff, it only matters if it makes you happy in the end, no? 
Well, not happy, but content, yeah. A little different. Sort of. Happiness and the good life are not one in the same. For me and for Stoics, since virtue is the ultimate good, they were essentially placing their moral values above their personal happiness. That's nice, Lau. But we all want to be happy, no? I want to make others happy too. But I also want to be happy myself. And you must too, right? Yeah, right. So, are you? Mm. I'm not a perfect person, Twyla. Just because I advocate all of this thinking doesn't mean I practice it flawlessly. I know, that wasn't the question. I care about you too, Lau. I know it's your job, but you're not doing this because of your job. Not really. Ona's the same. He told me all about it. Old Lau Senior. I see. So? You work all day, you try your hardest to care to understand things, to find the truth in all of this. Hmm. But does any of it make you happy? In the end, I couldn't answer her question. I mumbled something in dismissal. I distracted myself by asking the waiter for the bill. Coward. All this talk and I can't answer such a simple question. But what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Could I really tell her that despite all of this thinking, I feel happiest when I'm with her? Ah, can you date already? Gosh darn it. <laughs> ask her out. I mean, it's probably against some code, but still, ask her out. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> we were quiet on the ride back. I don't know why I sprung that question on Lau. A strange mood has been hanging over me. I can't shake it. Lau heads out and I go upstairs to get ready for bed. Oh, she feels like she did something wrong, but it's... She did something right. <laughs> Actually. I wanted to tell him whatever's on my mind, but I don't even know myself. Why do I feel like this? I know wanted Vulcan to keep fighting. Fighting the real fight. No matter how much I try, I haven't been getting any better. You fight through until you get there, Twyla. Fight through? Fight through what? To where? All this, it doesn't end. If I try to premeditate what tomorrow brings, even just what the night shift brings, it could be Flarian and anything. It could be Trestum, Contena, and a Paos Demon all at the same time. So what's even the point? Tomorrow, it'll be the same thing again and again. So should I stop enchanting then, if that's the problem? That can't be. I like enchanting, right? I don't know. It's better than being bedridden or just making jewellery. Is it? I think about the fantasy again. Making jewellery, marrying a baker boy, a simple life. Hmm. An unexamined life. But not a life of my own. What's wrong with my life as it is now, huh? Why am I complaining so much? I'm a flaring conduit. I'm one in a million. Because it's endless. The grief, the stress, the suffering. How can I fight it all? Why even fight? When it keeps coming. With acceptance, your struggles do not have to be interpreted as such. I held that disappointment in myself. I let it scar my spirit and vowed to never stop fighting the real fight. Honey, Lau and Lau Senior are telling me different things, aren't they? Meanwhile, Vulcan and I are struggling along. That's odd. Are they really giving us different advice? I guess. Lau's telling me to accept my struggles, while Ona wants Vulcan to fight through them. What if Vulcan accepted his struggles? Accepted the world as it is, instead of being so frustrated with it. Then his struggles would not be interpreted as such. Hmm? Huh? 
But if he accepted how the world is and stopped fighting it, then he wouldn't remain true to himself, like Ona said. He wouldn't be fighting the fight he wanted to, he would be pretending. But if all he did was struggle, then presumably he'd always be frustrated with the world and disappointed in himself, no matter how much he fought. Kinda like... like me. Like me? Am I always frustrated with the world? And disappointed in myself? Is that what I'm feeling right now? Huh? It starts to unfold in my mind. Then tangles back together. Lao is saying accept life. Ona is saying to fight it. I'm fighting life and Vulcan is accepting it. That means we should both swap. We should both try to do what the other's doing. I should accept life and Vulcan should fight it. Acceptance. So my struggles are not interpreted as such. Because it keeps coming. The struggles keep coming. The suffering keeps coming. Misfortune is inevitable. So you can't just fight it. Yeah. I go around in circles a few more times in my head. And it starts to make more sense. Why can't I just be happy and things can't be simple? Because you're struggling and fighting too much instead of accepting. So let me get this straight. I should be accepting of all of this. Of, of mum being gone. Of this outburst. Of all these problems I've been having with enchanting. Of my spirit being all out of sorts. Why? Because these problems, the struggle, it's endless. But it doesn't have to be a struggle. Not if I stop thinking of it that way. And if all I do is feel disappointed in myself and frustrated with everything that goes wrong, then I'm just refusing to let myself be happy and content. When instead, I could just let myself be happy? Could I? But if I were to be accepting, wouldn't I be like Vulcan? I'd lose track of who I really am and what I really am. I'd live a simple life in the life that won't ever work out for me. The unexamined life. I guess that's on the other end of the spectrum. So I need to be somewhere in between accepting the chaos and fighting it. Yeah? I let the thoughts swirl around, simmer and fester. I let myself drift in and out of confusion. I never even come close to sleep. I think on acceptance, does it really help that much just to accept things? I think on differences between us all, Lau and I and Ona and Vulcan, and what it all means, if anything. I go from feeling like a genius to a complete dolt, and back again, over and over. But at the end of it all, I think I've come to some kind of conclusion. For brief moments, I find myself thinking of mum, in a way I've never managed to before, and a strange hint of peace pervades my spirit. But the thought is fleeting, and slips away before I can fully grasp it. I get up hours later, wide awake, despite not a wink of sleep. I text Lau and he replies right away. It feels odd. For the first time in forces knows how long, here I am, going out of my way to bring someone into my struggles, relying on them. Thank you, Lau. Oh.